Hello everybody and welcome to the Disneyland Magical Audio Tour update for June 16th, 2017. Today I'm going to talk about all of the tracks I have added over the past two weeks to my Disneyland Magical Audio Tour. And for those who would like to follow along as I go through the many, many tracks I've added, I've been quite busy. Uh, you can do so by going to chapter 20 of my website, uh, Disneyland Magical Audio Tour, otherwise known as Disneyland After Dark. I actually, um, there are 138 tracks on this page. When I first started to go through and re-edit and add everything to this chapter, there were only 32 tracks. It was This was at the beginning of the year when I first started working on this page. And now I'm up to 99 completed tracks, which means I have 39 left to go. So I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. <clears throat> the um, There's only three sections that I have left to work on, and they're all these clusters that are the colored sections. Everything that has a white background is done, with one exception, which is this track down here, A Kiss Goodnight, because I'm waiting for this track to get released. It has not been released by Disney yet, um, so whenever it is, I will add it to this page. So that's kind of in limbo right now. So I cannot work on that one. So technically I only have 38 to work on at this point. So the three sections I have to work on yet are this Big Bands in Disneyland Summer Concert Series. See all of these tracks are all coming soon. But then when you get past this colored section and they're individually labeled tracks. Those are all done. So the next section is Swing Bands in Disneyland, which is similar to the Big Bands in Disneyland, but it's a later, like this is the 80s, and then the Swing Bands is the 90s and early 2000s. So it was kind of a different era, but the same thing. So that's why I separated them. And then I have one last section, which is the Tomorrowland Terrace, which is the present day. And I say present day because thankfully they have, <clears throat> excuse me, thankfully they have brought back the dancing at the Tomorrowland Terrace only over the past couple of weeks. So these are all of the different dance bands that have, have been performing and still are performing in many cases at the Tomorrowland Terrace as we know it today. So a few past bands and several present ones that have been playing there for years and some of them are still playing there. So those are the three sections I have left to work on. And I will begin working on those today because just last night I finished everything that does not involve those three sections on this chapter. Let me go through what I have added since the last time I spoke with you about my audio tour. First, I'll, first of all, I did move a track, and I often tweak things and move things around where I think they're better. Originally, I had this track, the Main Street Electrical Parade 2017, located at the bottom of the page. My original thinking was this is the latest thing. It should be at the end of the chapter. But I decided it worked out a little bit better for people to find it, and it just kind of works out better just to keep everything electrically parade uh, affiliated in the same section. So I moved that up to where the uh, vintage electrical parade tracks are. So now all of the electrical parade tracks are together in one cluster. So the first track I added uh, since I last spoke with you was... Uh, the Roland River Review, which actually was on the site prior to now, but I improved the audio quality and did some major cleanup on it. So it's a 2.0, much improved version. So if you've already heard the original and enjoyed it, you'll really enjoy this because it's nice and crisp and clean and sounds really great. 
Um, this was, uh, for those who don't know, it was a precursor to what we know today as Fantasmic. It was a stage show that was set on the uh, rivers of America. They had it on Tom Sawyer's Island, far less technically advanced than Fantasmic. It was more of a live review with a guest star, so they would have an opening number, which is what you hear in this track, and then they would invite a special guest star for that week uh, to perform. The only two that I know about are Pearl Bailey and... Uh, Gosh, the other one escapes me. There's only two that I'm aware of. I know there were many others, but I have not. I've tried to research it, and I can't find the names of any of the other people who have perf have performed at this event. Um, usually, they're somehow, from what I'm gathering, this was more themed to Frontierland. They didn't quite want to break away from the whole Frontierland thing because it was located in Frontierland. Once they did Fantasmic, they just were like, we don't care if it's in Frontierland, we're just doing whatever we want to do. But so I'm gathering that the performers had something to do with Americana, like old jazz, like, like Pearl Bailey sang a lot of jazz standards, like uh, Won't You Come Home, Bill, ba Bill Bailey, and that type of music was her thing. So those type of performers would have been who performed at the Rolling River Review. If I ever can get a good list of some of the performers that, that, that uh, were featured, perhaps someday I'll add a new track of all those performers like I've done with other tracks where I do like a mix of all one song from each performer. So if anyone knows where I can get a hold of that list of who performed at the Roland River Review, let me know. So that was in the early 80s when they did that. So the next section I worked on was this uh, Tomorrowland After Dark, which is basically the Tomorrowland stage, or at that point it was called the Space Stage, and the Tomorrowland Terrace in the 70s and early 80s, and what was going on at that time in those venues. Um, first track I added is called Pizzazz, which is a uh, featured group that was uh, performed at the Tomorrowland Terrace. And the music I have here is from an actual recording by that group. Um, so it's an authentic Pizzazz recording, but it wasn't recorded live at Disneyland. It's a studio recording, but it is the group that performed at Disneyland. The next... Uh, uh, group is kind of interesting. It's a group that was originally called Grupo Tabasco, or s more Tabasco for short, uh, and this was in the 70s, and some of the members of that group, not all of them, returned in the 80s and did um, performing at Disneyland under the name of a group called Crash. So I kind of have them grouped together as the same, Grupo Tabasco, a.k.a. Crash. And these are authentic recordings by that group. They have sort of a Latin feel to them. They're pop music, but it's all Spanish language. But that is an, a group that performed in the park, and it's authentic recordings by that group from the, I'd say, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, Friendship Train and Sunshine Balloon were two groups that were very predominantly featured in Tomorrowland during the late 70s, early 80s, and, well, I'd say early 70s to early 80s. For about 10 years, these were big-time performers at Disneyland. They were they were kind of formed by Disneyland. They weren't um, outside groups, and that's kind of the reason why I couldn't find any recordings by them. So what I did is I did find some live footage of both of these groups playing in Disneyland, uh, nothing that the audio was something that was able to be used because the audio was pretty bad or cut off or not enough of it. So what I did was I found uh, music that sounded similar to these two groups, and it's sort of a placeholder. So these are not authentic. Friendship Train and Sunshine Balloon are not authentic music by those groups, but they they do these do include songs that I he have heard them perform in those videos. For example, uh, Friendship Train um, uh, sings a song called "I Got the Music in Me," 
and I did find a version that sounds very similar to their version of it, so that's included. So I kind of tried to match it as close as I can using different groups. Papa Do Run Run is kind of a, a uh, Beach Boys cover band, and they were playing in the park from the 60s up through the 90s even. And this is authentic. This is their recording. Um, this has been on my site for a while. I did not add this recently. It's been there and it hasn't changed. Same thing with the Space Stage, Space Age Disco concert. There's a recording by Jack Wagner um, doing a slideshow presentation. It's the audio that went along with the slideshow, which is advertising the entertainment going on in Disneyland. And I think it was 1980 or 81 that this recording was done. And I actually found one of the uh, songs that he featured when he was talking about the Space Age disco concert at the Space Stage. So I found that song, and then I found a bunch of songs by the same group. So I included all that in this little medley here. Now this is interesting. And I want to talk about this group a little bit, because they're, it's kind of something that was really interesting and not too many people know about. It was a group called Halix. This was a group that was formed by Disney, and the Imagineers were actually involved in all of it. And it was supposed to be kind of a Battlestar Galactica, Star Wars type themed band. But they played, you know, kind of soft rock. Not kind of like heavy metal, but not really heavy, heavy metal. Kind of like borderline heavy metal music. Um, and uh, here's some uh, – I've only found three articles online about this group. There's not that much information out there, but uh, I'll, I'll provide the links when uh, Melanie, uh, who does my uh, notes on these, uh, on these episodes, in a few days when she does the corresponding notes, I'll, she'll include the links to these sites so you can go check them out. But um, – Halix was kind of a, it had kind of a Chewbacca character. Um, the main singer was a female singer, and she wore, you know, gold, <laughs> gold hot pants and whatever. It was kind of, you know, supposed to be futuristic looking, kind of like, you know, science fiction. Um, and they performed at the, um, at the, at the space stage. And the piano, the or uh, organist, the keyboardist, <laughs> actually, the keyboard was set up on a cart just like this, so the keyboard could move around the stage and move off and on the stage, kind of like a like a robotic thing. And this is what this is a drawing Imagineers did of what the keyboard guy setup looked like. So it was like a little robotic looking contraption that the keyboard guy wrote in and out on. Here's a better illustration. Kind of interesting, kind of fun. And here's another picture of the group. And you can see the keyboard guy behind, they're sitting on him. And then this Chewbacca character, and I have no idea who this is, but he's a little creepy looking to me. Um, this is um, a gentleman named Bruce Gowdy who wrote several of the songs, and he went on to perform... Um, lead guitar for a few different um, level B, I'd say, rock bands throughout the 80s. But uh, she actually mentions him, the singer here. She mentions him in my um, mix that I made, and I'll talk about that in a second. Here's another backstage look. He, This is the Chewbacca-looking guy with his head off, with his, you know, his mask off. Um, and then he even has a part two, this this blogger has a part two with some with some more pictures um the lead singer uh laura mumford she actually passed away a couple years ago uh, which is kind of sad she died really young but uh, this is what she looked like outside of all that costuming <laughs> here's kind of a, a concept rendering of what the group was going to look like and originally it was going to be called starfire that was the original name of the group, but then they, I don't know, I like the name Starfire better, if you ask me, but for some reason they 
decided to change the name to um, Helix, which is a strange name. Here's an, a really cool image of a concept image of how they were going to look. And they looked pretty much like that. I mean, this character in the back didn't wasn't part of it, but other than that, it's pretty similar. So it's really neat that they had this uh, themed, very heavily themed rock group in Tomorrowland. I think that's something that would would work today if they brought something like that back. I think that would be really interesting. Here's a concept rendering of what they're going they call, quote-unquote, the Wookiee, because he didn't really have an official name. So um, here's the person getting into the costume. Here's another article. I love this image. This is a poster that they made for Halix. Um, very, you know, Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica looking. Um, very 80s. <laughs> uh, and this is interesting. On YouTube, they actually have uh, three videos that are live performances by Halix that were recorded by somebody in the audience as they performed live. And that is what I used. Welcome, everybody. We're called Halix. By... Yeah! I'd like to thank everyone for coming to our show tonight. We're going to finish up with a song written by Bruce Gowdy. See, that's where he she mentions Bruce Gowdy. Um, so yeah, they they um, somebody thankfully bothered to record them, and they posted three of their videos, and that's what I used to create my um, audio track. But I enhanced it by I added more sound effects, and I added the sound of the audience in the background. Listen to what that sounds like. That gives you an idea of what they sounded like. And um, if you want to hear the rest, just go to my site. And so, yeah, that's Halix. Interesting. The next track I added was, um, I did add one track, which was already on the site, but it wasn't the same as what I have now. I changed it, and that's part of this uh, Big Bands in Disneyland section that I told you before I have to work on next. Um, but the opening track is actually the theme music and the announcement from a television series from the Disney Channel in the 80s with um, Gary Owens. Gary Owens was an announcer for the show Laugh-In, and he also did a lot of Hanna-Barbera voices in the 70s, and uh, he was also the narrator of the Epcot Center original World of Motion attraction. But uh, it has his announcement and the full version of the original theme song from this. And originally I did have that, but the sound quality wasn't that great because I had to overlap Gary Owens' uh, narration over the music, and I wasn't as good at doing it when I first made this, which I did this, oh gosh, maybe seven years ago originally. This, is a really, this was a really oldie, um, so it was definitely time to update it and make it better because I've learned a lot since then um, but uh, now it's just that song before I had it lead into other songs and it was a medley of all sorts of big band music at that point this was the only big band track I had on the site so that's why I had it lead into a whole bunch of music other songs and made a medley out of it now I've separated it all I'm gonna have it all separated into different bands so no longer necessary to have it be a medley so now it's just the theme song unlike before and an enhanced version of it better sound quality skipping down all this because we're going to work on that later let's talk about grad night now my opinion is that 
today's grad night, even grad night beginning in the 90s, kind of is not as fantastic as it was in the 80s and 70s and even 60s. So I'm not really representing the 90s grad nights or the 2000s grad nights because the caliber of performers is not as top notch as it once was. So I decided that the real the real golden age of Disneyland's grad night was probably the 80s. So I've I created two mixes. Um, one spanning the first five years of the 80s, the other one spanning the second five years of the 80s. And it pretty much includes uh, one song from every major performer who performed at the Grad Nights during those years. Um, how do I know who performed at the Grad Nights? Well, I went to another site that I love. And unfortunately, the site is still up and running, but they have not added any content to it in years. They used to add stuff every day for years and years, and then just all of a sudden uh, they stopped adding anything. Maybe they ran out of things to add. <laughs> but uh, they have a bunch of grad night paraphernalia uh, brochures and things, and I went through, and, and they list all of the groups that uh, performed on these brochures that they would hand out to people that were attending grad night. This is the 1980 brochure. Cool and the Gang, KC and the Sunshine Band, Terry Desario, Papa Do Run Run, which I did not include in my medley because they're included in their own mix as I showed you a few minutes ago. They didn't, So I didn't include them. And then Shalimar. All of these, with the exception of Papa Do Run Run, you'll hear in my mix. Um, so basically that's that um the um see they just got all this is another i'll provide another link to the it's called vintage disneyland tickets the site it's great it's got tons of old magazine articles and um they scanned like the whole magazine you can look at um here's grad night 85 here's who performed at grad night in 1985 Midnight Star, Daz Band, Shalimar, Animotion, Shannon, X, and Dan Hartman. I think most of those are in my mix as well. So that's what these are about. And I'm going to have Melanie provide you with a list of all the songs that I have included in um, these two mixes. I'm not a major fan of 80s music, but... I want my site to be, you know, include all the history of the park, whether it's something I'm all that gung ho about it or not. And I also want it to include music that appeals to everybody, not just me. So it wasn't that fun for me to edit these because it's not my favorite kind of music, but I did it for you. I did it for the fans because <laughs> I know a lot of people love 80s music. I'm just not one of them. I lived through the 80s and. Um, I didn't like it then, and I don't like it now. I was just not a fan of contemporary music growing up. Um, here are some of the, the songs, just to get a brief look. Cool and the Gang, Pointer Sisters, Sister Sledge. Uh, who else is big here? New Kids on the Block, Samantha Fox, Wang Chung, Everybody Wang Chung Tonight, Miami Sound Machine, Gloria Stefan, you know. Yeah, so a lot of big big performers are represented. Some you may not have heard of, but uh, a lot of fun. So if you are a fan of 80s music, be sure to check that out. Uh, next track, I want to kind of explain this. Originally, I did have a track called Live On Stage All-Star Performances, but it included music from a couple of um, Disney albums where f that were from the late 80s and 90s that were pop groups performing Disney songs. And I decided that really wasn't authentic because these groups never actually performed in the park. And I was just trying to make something that kind of sounded like some of the f famous groups that played in the park, but it wasn't all that authentic. So what I decided to do with this track was instead, there are three specials that were uh, aired on TV in the 80s that really showcased the type of entertainment that was performing in Disneyland during that time. 
There was the 1985 30th anniversary Disneyland TV special. There was the 1986 grand opening of Captain EO special. And then there was a special called um, Summer Vacation Party, which basically was uh, a grad night with all sorts of, you know, A-list performers at this grad night. A lot of stand-up comedians and things like that. So those three specials, every... Um, uh, modern day performer, and I say that because there there are a few groups like uh, Chubby Checker and and um, you know some of the Righteous Brothers that aren't really they were just kind of performing there, but they weren't contemporary performers, so I didn't I did not include them, but all of the contemporary performers are included in this mix. And uh, it's an hour and a half long, and basically it's studio-recorded versions. It's all of the uh, non-live versions of these songs that were performed live in the park. So it's not only the authentic artists that performed in the parks, but it's the actual songs that they performed in the parks. The other thing is, originally, this track had... Uh, when I played that Halix track a minute ago for you, you heard the screaming audience in the background. Well, originally, my first version of this track had that screaming audience in the background as part of it. I decided not to do that with this version because I already am using them now for Halix, and I didn't want to have two tracks that have the same sound effect. So now that sound effect is heard in Halix, and now the music um, in this track, the all-star performances, is without any sound effects. It's just the music. Um, moving on. <laughs> Big Thunder Barbecue is the area music loop that uh, you he would hear at the Big Thunder Barbecue area at Big Thunder Ranch in Frontierland. And this is kind of a nighttime take on it because you can hear the sound of crackling fire and crickets um, in the background. Throughout this whole hour mix, you hear a crackling fire, the campfire, and the sounds of crickets and whatnot. So um, this was on the site before, but it was only, I think, a seven or nine minute version. It was really truncated. This is the complete loop now. It's the one hour complete loop unabridged with uh, the same sound effects and everything from before, but it's just the longer version. Phantasmic TV announcement. That's a commercial from the 90s uh, announcing the opening of Phantasmic. Now, Phantasmic was on my site before now, but I redid it and I made the audio quality better. And also, the version I had on there before, I think, was only 18 minutes. I had cut out some of it because when I had originally edited it, I was trying to fit it on a CD that I was making for my family. And I had to cut it down a little bit so that it would fit on the CD. And I never bothered to go back and fix that later. And I just never went back and did it. And I finally went back and did it after years and years of putting it off. So finally, the uncut full version of Phantasmic is on my site, which is kind of crazy that it never was before. Um, this is a, a medley of songs by the Disneyland band, and it's kind of like their take on the music from Phantasmic, which is kind of fun. I just recently added that. And Light Magic TV announcement, again, is a commercial from the 90s announcing Phantasmic. And Light Magic, again, was on my site before, but the new version is um, better sound quality. And the um, there's a middle section that uh, was not in my original version. And this middle section, it's about a, f a four or five minute section. Um, it was not included in any of the official uh, soundtrack releases of this parade. And somebody sent me that section um, that had it in their private collection, and I added it and to the parade. So this is a, it includes a section you won't hear anywhere else. So this is pretty much the complete show, uncut, which is exclusive to my site. 
All right, so now we're skipping over these big bands. We're going to work on that later. And the last thing that I added, which I added late last night, was Fantasy in the Sky. And again, this was on my site before, but I redid it and improved the sound quality. And what's really fun about this version is it includes the sounds of fireworks. So you, if you close your eyes uh, and imagine you're in the park, you get the full experience of really being there with the you know the crackling fire and everything you know the the whistle the rocket whistles and everything so that's everything that i have added to my site since the last time oh well there's one more thing and i forgot to mention it and i'm glad i just thought of it because i almost ended without mentioning it um it's actually on another chapter let's go over to disneyland records by clicking on my um, hub, welcome to the hub. Uh, so click on Disneyland Records, it'll take us to that page. Now the Disneyland Records chapter is all of the um, albums that have been released from the 50s up until now that are Disneyland Park themed. Um, so it includes, uh, you know, live recordings from the park that were released on vinyl and... Um, it includes uh, uh, soundtrack albums from different attractions and all different types of vinyl albums, storyteller albums based on Disney attractions. So it's kind of like, um, and, and everything on here has been cleaned up and it's probably the best versions you'll find of these uh, recordings anywhere because I did a lot of major major cleanup on these uh, old recordings um, in a lot of cases all I had to work with were the vinyl albums and I did a lot of cleanup on taking out all the crackling and hissing and popping um, but at the very very bottom of the page I added a brand new track just the other well, actually I added it yesterday this is an album from 96 called Disney's Music from the Park. It's mostly Walt Disney World, but it's kind of both parks in a sense. But uh, the reason I added it is because this is the main album that I had been using before for my uh, live performances in the parks track, which I removed, um, which I just mentioned a, a minute ago. So I decided since I had removed that, I wanted to still include that music. So I decided to instead include it as a entry in my Disneyland Records chapter. So you'll find it at the very bottom of my Disneyland Records chapter. So pretty much with a couple exceptions, all of the songs that were included in that track, which no longer is on my site, you can still hear them on the Disneyland Records page. So, you can still hear the cheering crowd. You can still hear all the same tracks. So, everything's been tweaked and rearranged and everything, but basically everything that was on there before is still on there now. <laughs> so, that's my update for today. And uh, before I go, I want to mention again that uh, I do have, uh, if you go to the top of my website, uh, and click on the very last entry in the table of contents called Donate to Site. Um, it does cost money to add content, to pay my web hosting fees, to um, uh, pay my internet bill. All these things cost money. I am on a fixed income. I am a disabled person. And um, so any type of help that anybody who enjoys this music can provide would be most appreciated. You can either do a one-time donation of any amount you so choose by clicking on my um, donate button under my PayPal. That'll take you to a link where you can donate a dollar to two million dollars. That would be nice. <laughs> um, and uh, I'd probably have to stop being on disability if someone <laughs> donated two million dollars, but that would be fine. Um, the uh, other place you can donate is Patreon, and this is a monthly donation where it takes out um, 
money like it can be a dollar can be two dollars be five dollars however much you want to contribute it'll take that amount once a month out of whatever form of payment you you choose it'll just automatically take it out I provide special updates to my patreon subscribers and I also provide special um, uh, audio content that's exclusive to my patreon subscribers so if you want to become a patreon subscriber you get special treatment from me <laughs> but I, I try to do the same thing for people who donate to me um, and and include them with my patreon subscribers so if you want to make a one-time donation I'll probably be able to to send you my um, lie uh, my exclusive content as well sometimes you might have to remind me because I don't keep a list of everybody that's donated um, whereas with patreon they keep a list for me of all my subscribers so it's easier for me to keep track so if I do release something and you're not included uh, just give me a nudge nudge and say hey I donated how come I didn't get anything and I'll be happy to send it to you no problem just remind me um, also I have these shirts for sale and I've had them up for quite a while um, this is what the design is it's, I did the design myself based on a Disney design but it's my own art based on their art um, and so it's available in blue white and pink they also have v-necks for the ladies and uh, that's basically it so if you want to help me out it would be most appreciated uh, my website is totally free and advertisement free I don't put any ads on the site it's all free for anyone to enjoy 24 hours a day and I hope everybody enjoyed our update for today um, next week I'll have a random vlog just talking about anything Disney related that uh, comes to my mind and in two more weeks I will have another Disneyland magical audio tour update I hope all the fathers out there have a wonderful Father's Day and I will talk to you all really soon bye bye